So I've already spoken a lot about how the Triassic was a bit of a weird period in terms of experimentation for reptiles and is also the time when we see a little known group called dinosaurs. You may have heard of them. So let's talk about one of the earliest known dinosaurs, the Herrerasaurus. Herrerasaurus was a genus of Ceriscian, meaning its pubis pointed forwards, that was first discovered in the late Triassic rocks of Argentina in 1959 in the same unit as another basal dinosaur, Eoraptor. It wasn't actually described until 1963 though, when Osvaldo Rag named it Herrerasaurus Gistiduel Lastensis. Now he did also name it Gisaurus, but this has since been considered a junior synonym of Herrerasaurus. Now in terms of the grouping of this animal, it's a little bit of a convoluted discussion, so make sure you stick around for me to go further into that discussion. But in the meantime, why don't we just take a look at the description of this animal. Herrerasaurus was very much your typical carnivorous dinosaur on the surface. And minus the toe claw, you might actually mistake this one for one of the raptors in Jurassic Park. Now this guy was likely built for fast hunting. Despite being up to 20 feet long and 770 pounds in weight, we can get an idea of its speedy capabilities if we look at those legs. You see, proportionate to the rest of the body, Herrerasaurus's femur was actually fairly short and its feet were pretty long. Now this kind of setup is mechanically ideal for running quickly and is actually so exaggerated in its descendants that they actually look like their knees go backwards. Those forelimbs were also notably shorter, but ideal for grasping prey with a tail that was also stiffened by overlapping vertebra, keeping the animals balanced when running and being capable of storing more potential energy. Quick side fact. You ever notice how animals that are capable of tremendous bursts of speed and power don't actually appear to have much muscle to back it up? Well, that's because there is a much more efficient way. The gastric nemius or calf muscle is really quite a small muscle. Yet, if you've ever gotten onto a calf raise machine, you've probably found it's one of the strongest parts of your body. Being able to lift your entire body with as much added weight without even breaking a sweat, which is why bodybuilders have such a hard time trying to build any size on their calves. Now this is actually because the muscle isn't actually doing much work. Most of the work is actually being done by specialised tendons that are down there that are attached to the ankles, which have become huge and massively strong because they store what is known as elastic energy. The same way that resistant bands help with lifts, these tendons use that stretched out stored energy to help the muscle along, which is incredibly efficient for long periods of locomotion without expending as much energy and is seen best in bipedal animals. Now, not only does a longer fur actually help this with digitigrade animals, but it also is seen in the tails of dinosaurs. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but Dinosaurs are not really famous for their arse cheeks. That's because they're called Ophemeralis, which is kind of like their equivalent of a gluteus maximus and does the same thing. Stretches from the back of the leg along the tail. With stiffened tails full of strong ossified tendons that can store lots of elastic energy like our lower legs, many smaller dinosaurs like Herrerasaurus could be nifty and swift almost effortlessly. So Herrerasaurus was doing the small nifty predator thing long before Velociraptor was, but why did it actually need to do this? Well, as always, the answer lies in the environment. Herrerasaurus was found in the Iscidulasto formation in Argentina. This environment at the time was a fairly typical one for the Triassic, albeit volcanically active. The formation of Pangaea meant homogenised environments with heavy seasonality and many deltaic systems that grew and shrank across floodplains from season to season. Forests of thick trees, conifers and cyads covered much of the area and the animals that inhabited the area included various sizes of herbivorous synapsids, the odd smaller dinosaur like the aforementioned Eoraptor and many diverse archosaurs like Pseudosuchians that may have challenged Herrerasaurus's niche as well as strange looking rhychosaurs and other archosauromorphs that weren't technically dinosaurs but did heavily resemble them, representing transitionary forms. 
And when we look at later dinosaurs, Herrerasaurus' size seems quite modest, but at the time this was actually one of the largest predators in its area, hinting at the fact that this could have been an apex predator. The speedy part likely evolved thanks to the presence of other large predators like Saurosuchus, meaning it could beat it through speed rather than just flat out challenging the Pseudosuchian. Now even though the Triassic does mark the dawn of the dinosaurs, true dinosaurs were actually few and far between. In fact, these dinosaurs are so basal that most paleontologists can't actually agree with how to group them. You may have noticed that I've avoided calling Herrerasaurus a theropod, despite the fact that it looks exactly like one. It was definitely a Sauriscian, but existed long before sauropods and theropods diverged away from each other fully, and actually shares many features with both. Most cladistical studies place this guy within a group just outside of theropods and sauropods, but some argue this shouldn't be considered a dinosaur at all, especially since the opening of its acetabulum, which is the defining trait of a dinosaur, was tiny and almost negligible. Now it seems silly considering how much this animal seems at a glance clearly a theropod, but you have to remember how many archosaurs were running around during the Triassic that seemed indistinguishable from dinosaurs, but technically one. The Triassic, unlike other periods, had a lot of blurred lines as to what was and wasn't a dinosaur, and even how to classify what was a dinosaur. Now, one mystery animal that no one seems to be able to agree on is one little critter named Smock, but I'll be talking about him next time. <laughs>